Hey folks, welcome back to the show. Today I thought I'd do a little tips and tricks video on making ink pens with different acrylics. My first tip here is when making acrylic ink pens, one of the hardest parts is these acrylic blanks are sometimes translucent. You can see the brass tube. that's embedded in them and you have to use the brass tubes they have white ones and they have nickel ones but you know that's extra cost for the maker so the easiest and cheapest solution i found is to paint the inside of the blank i've tried painting the tubes i've used different paints and it works but a lot of times you'll Go to put the tube inside the blank like this. And with the paint on it, it's a little bit bigger. So you end up scraping some of the paint off of the tube. It doesn't work as well. So I find if you back paint, that's what we call it, the inside of the, the blank, it mixes with the uh, super glue that I use. Some people might use five minute epoxy. I just use CA glue. But it mixes with the super glue a little bit and gives you uh, full coverage. I don't have a problem when I do this. And I like to use the matching color if I have it. Like right here, I have a hot pink that's pretty close. So I'm gonna use a hot pink paint the inside of this pink tube and I use a q-tip just a really little q-tip just dip right in the paint try to get the best coverage you can and try not to get it on your fingers like I do and once you've painted both tubes, and the Q-tip works the best, I found. I tried different brushes, but the Q-tip gets you down far enough, gets a pretty good coverage, does absorb a little bit more uh, um, paint than a paintbrush does, I believe. But it does a really good job. Smooth off at the ends. That way you don't have any globs of paint nowhere. And there you go. Now, if you're just going to paint them and leave them, I'd leave it overnight. Let the paint set up all the way. Or, you can do my, what I do. So I throw these into my shop toaster oven at 150 degrees for an hour. Then... It's dry and cured, ready to go. Okay, now these have baked and they're nice and dry here. They were in the oven for an hour at 150 degrees or so. Now we're gonna glue the tubes in. Now, as you can see, I got a little bit of blowout when I drilled through. Even though I didn't drill all the way through, I usually drill a little, drill down to about here and then I sand it out, but this one kind of got away from me. And then this one doesn't have it. It's got nice flat ends on both sides. Now we're gonna glue, and I use stick fast thick. You can use medium. Thin just is too thin. It just runs right out the barrel. And, uh, but the thick takes a little bit longer to dry, so you have a little bit more working time. Now this kit I'm doing is a princess kit. And the princess kits come with nicely pre-scuffed tubes. So you don't have to scratch them all up with the sandpaper. So what I do is take a little bit of Play-Doh. It's regular Play-Doh. You can steal this from your kids if you got it. They don't play with it anymore. And you just take a little bit. I'll smush it right onto the lid here.
and you take your tube, you just cut yourself a nice little plug. And that helps keep some of the glue out of the tubes. Sometimes I remember to do this, sometimes I don't. If you don't remember or you don't want to do it, you just need to get yourself a nice chainsaw file. I always got chainsaw files around because I cut my firewood. I also use, if it's real bad, I'll use my rasp that I use for um, cutting spirals. I'll run that through there a couple times and that will usually take care of most super glue. And if you have a pocket knife, like I use a little one with a real thin tip here, and it can get down and kind of scrape away some of the excess glue. But for now, we're going to glue these tubes in, and I'm going to start with the smaller one here. And I run a bead of glue around the inside of the barrel. And I take my tube. I start kind of working it around. If you're smart, unlike me, you start with the right side of the tube that has a plug in it. And then you, I put glue along the outside. It's probably excessive, the amount of glue I use, but it's better to have a little bit more than not enough and push that down. I try to recess it a little bit below the surface because we're gonna trim that up with a barrel trimmer. And now for the bigger one, always make sure your tubes fit well before you do this. Especially if you paint your tubes, sometimes it's a little tighter. And this glue is a model glue from Model Masters. It dries a lot harder than the testers. A lot quicker too. I might have to get some more of that in different colors, but the Model Masters is the only one I found that had a good hot pink. I know hot pink isn't a very big model color for for those for young boys to paint model cars with, but. I'm sure there's some girls out there that like to paint cars. Okay. Well, that's recessed in there a little bit. Now you see I got glue all over my hands. That's why I protected myself with a pair of gloves. Wipe that off with a paper towel. And I hit the hole outside and inside with an um, activator. You don't have to do this, but I find it's a little easier when I stick it in the toaster oven to cure the super glue. I don't have to worry about it sticking to the um, inside of the toaster oven. So now I'm gonna put this back in the toaster oven for 20 minutes at 150 degrees. And it's cold in the shop. That's the only reason I do it. If it's not cold like it is here up in the mountains in Northern California, then you can just leave it in your shop for, I'd give it at least 15 minutes before you decide to mill it. Or you could uh, push your tube straight out the bottom with your uh, pen mandrel or your pen uh, mill. Okay, these have dried, the glue's already. I've already popped a little plug out of this one. And when I do that, I just take one of these, I got some extra ones of uh, the reamers that you use for pen mandrels. Cause I've gone through so many of these, I have a couple laying around. And I just take them and I kinda do a couple little flaps. And it pops that little plug of super glue that builds up out of there. And clean that up a little bit and now this one the small one I have a one that fits just perfect 
So that'll clean it up real nice. All we're gonna do is we'll just chuck it here in the, the drill chuck. Now on these, some of them, especially if you got the cheaper models, see if I can get you to see that. You can see there's a flat on there. When you put these in a drill chuck, you gotta be careful how you put them in. Cause if you put them in and this flat is right on one of those jaws, what will happen is, you'll turn on and you'll get a wobble. That one doesn't look too bad. But you can sure feel it when you're when you're going into a tube that's seven millimeters and that's got a wobble on it. So what you do is you put that flat right between the jaws and you hand tighten it down. And you come back and give her a good crank with your chuck key. And this is a seven millimeter one. I don't have an eight to do this. So what I do, is I have my centering jaws. These are magnetic, I get them from PSI. That's Penn State Industries. I just chuck it since I drilled it in this vise on this table and acrylic doesn't have the material that makes drill bits wander. I know that that holds straight. If you're doing this with wood, there's a possibility of your hole not being perfectly straight because drill bits like to wander, especially in woods, curly woods and burled woods even worse. So what you do is you just line it up as centered as you can be. And this is a sharp one. I just sharpened all these the other day. And to sharpen them, you need to get yourself a diamond flat file. And I have one around here somewhere. That's gonna be on my gravestone. There we go. Diamond flat file. I picked this up at a tool store for like six bucks. And when you do them, all you do is you want to file these flats right here. Not the tops, not the lips, just the little flat part. And this has two sides, a rough side and a fine side. It's kind of hard to tell the difference till you start. But you just want to hit it like this. Basically till it gets shiny. You're going to take all that... Clean it up, straighten it up, and you'll see it shines it up a little bit. And if you feel it, you can definitely feel it catch on your finger. And you go that all the way around. You can even set this on the table. Some people like to hold this and go this way, or you can hold it like a file. However you do it, just file these little parts right here. And you can reuse these over and over. I got like seven or eight of them now. Because until I figured out how to file, I kept buying new ones. But now I have them for most of the sizes, so I don't have to keep changing it. Because these little Allen head screws, they wear out really easy. Now on to the milling.
You want to use real gentle pressure. I kind of tap on it, as you can see. And it brings it up just till that end is flush and shines that copper, that brass tube up. Sometimes when you paint the tubes, it's actually kind of hard to tell. inside there and we'll just clean that up with a round file just like this sometimes you'll get a little burr when you do this around the rim of the tube it's from flattening and cutting it with this bit so I almost always run a chainsaw file around the inside of my tube it also helps chamfers the edges of the tube a bit, which allows you to have an easier time putting in the uh, tip, the nib, and the, any other parts that the kit may come with. Once you get it all cleaned up, that's pretty good. It's a little bit of schmutz there. Yeah. Looks pretty good all the way around. Move on to your next one. And this one has a different size, so we're gonna use a different pen mill. This one uses a 10 millimeter tube in it. So you try to use a 10 millimeter pilot shaft. I don't have one. I find that as long as they're close, it works out pretty well. Also, don't hit your finger on this. It doesn't look that bad, but it will take chunks out of your finger. Trust me, I know. If there's a way to get hurt in a shop, I'm pretty sure I've done it short of cutting off a digit. Also, whenever you're drilling like this and you're raising this up, best to put it, put your pilot shaft down in there, then raise up your, your table. There we go. And that's all cleaned up. Looks like there's a little bit of CA in there. Even though I put the plug in, that cleaned up real quick with a nice sharp file. Chamfer those edges a bit, take that burr out, and then we're on to the lathe. Now when it comes to the pen making, one of the hardest parts is keeping yourself organized. Especially for people like me, who are totally unorganized. These little bags bushings come in tend to get lost or separated from the bushings in general and then they end up like this being used as spares in spacer bushings so i found these at local craft store and they work pretty well you do have to write back what's in there from time to time 
I think I'll put some labels on here eventually if I get a label maker. But these work really well to keep organized. And I need this a princess pen, so I go to my princess pen bushings. And I write the code underneath, even though they're good for, because a lot of these are good for multiple different pens. And sometimes it'll be a different brand, like I'll have a Brea, I don't know if I'm saying that right, or a Daycom pen. The bushings are different, but it's the same pen kit as one that I already have done. So micrometer, this is just a micrometer from when I think I paid 10 or $15 for it on Amazon on sale. And this is one of the best ones I've gotten. You can do inches. You can do fractions of an inch, which is helpful when you're trying to uh, figure out if you have a drill bit that is close enough in standard when everything's in metric. Very handy tool. And you can also do metric in it. It's real responsive. It turns on and off as you move it. You don't have to actually push a button. It's just my favorite part. But there's lots of ways to store your bushings. This is just my way. I know a lot of people like these. These are from Turner's Warehouse. This is how they send their bushings. A little pop thing with keep your bushings in. It is nice if I had room to keep 30 different bushing containers with labels on them. I would. But my shop's a mess. I don't have room for that. So these little boxes seem to work pretty well for me. Okay, here at the lathe, I've been doing some diamond painting pens, so I'm not set up right now for ink pens. So let's change out our chuck. Now, I've engaged the stop feature in the back of my lathe. All lathes should have that. And with this chuck, it goes on and off pretty well. So I don't use a rubber washer or bushing or anything. So I just put one of these in, loosen it up comes right off. And we're gonna put the pen mandrel in. I press it in there, unlock my lathe, bring my tailstock up, and so you don't get bent mandrels, just tighten your mandrel up a couple times, using the tail stock and it'll push it the rest of the way in that head stock. Don't put too much torque on it. When you're bringing your tail stock up, you just wanna bring it up till it's just tight. You know, and lock it down and then you're good. Now we're gonna mount these up on the lathe. Take out our princess bushings. And these are nice kits because you don't have to worry about looking at the diagram on the instructions. Because they make them pretty simple, seeing as they have two different diameter holes. So you can't really get confused. So I know this is a longer one, so I'll take the spacer bushing off the end. And since these Diamond casts don't really have an orientation or a grain structure to them. Don't have to worry about the orientation you put them on the lathe. If I was doing wood, I'd match up the lines I made before I cut, when I cut it. Make sure I had everything nice and lined up. I'm going to tighten. I like... The old fashioned with the knurled bolt or nut. I can put a lot more torque on it this way. And I don't have to worry about bending my mandrel doing that. Instead of with a mandrel saver, where I'm relying on my tail stock to push all of the friction to hold these from spinning. I know a lot of guys. Swear by the mandrel saver. 
I like, this is how I do it. So I'm gonna bring that up just tight, lock it down, turn your gnaw, your handles out of the way. I don't know if that picked up on camera, but. Now, if you're just starting out and you don't have any tools, but maybe a cheap set you bought from a garage sale or you don't have carbide yet, I do recommend you buying one. Even these cheap ones from AliExpress, I finally ground a little flat spot on the bottom of this, but are worth the $25 a piece for them. But if you're using just a couple spindle gouges, you can turn a very nice pen with just some spindle gouges. Here's a medium one. This is a Hurricane model from woodturningstore.com, I believe. None of these people sponsored me, of course. I'd have to actually have subscribers to be sponsored. But this one's fairly sharp. I sharpened it last week. High speed. Eye protection. As you can see, you can get a real nice cut, even with just spindle gouges that aren't super duper sharp. But they are not as quick and are easier to mess up with, in my opinion, than a round carbide or square carbide. I don't use a square much. As you can see, I can take a lot larger biting cut and still have a nice surface to work with. I'm gonna round off this one and get this turned into shape. And as you saw, I kind of creep up on the size of the bushings, not to go too close and uh, have a divot in front of the bushings. I want it to just come right to a nice rolling gentle transition. Now where I'm going to sand this up and we'll get to assembly.
Now I'm gonna buff the, I'm gonna polish these with a little bit of Zona sandpaper. I've been trying it out a little bit for the last couple weeks. It's not bad, it does a pretty good job. It's about, it's the same as if you were to use a micro mesh on the little pads, but you don't have to worry about burning the pads as much. So to use them, you just take, I just cut little squares off of them for every day that I use them. And then I'll take first one, dip it in the water, and then we polish. And then I'm going to go all through all these grits and we'll see how it looks. looks really good it's got a very nice shine to it and if you're looking at it trying to see if you missed any imperfections just have a hard light source it shines right on it I got this light behind my leaf that does a really nice job just looking at the glare now I'm gonna take this over to my buffing wheel that I have a white diamond buffing wheel and I'm gonna hit it just for that little bit of extra shine it'll bring up. And then we'll put it together. Now we get ready to assemble. We're going to start with our layout. At least that's what they tell you to do. Basically, for me, that just means taking them all out of the bags. I know some people you save these bags. You put them on their fingers and use them to uh, do CA finishes. I use paper towels, so I don't bother with that too much. Now, one thing I do as soon as I take them out of the bag is I put the spring on so I don't lose it. So it drops on the floor in here, the shavings will eat it. A lot of these springs have two ways that they go on. You can put them on this way, where the coil is kind of the smaller bit of the coil. Put the bigger bit of the coil on, where there's more coils here, it won't stay on. If you put it the other way, snaps right into that little groove that they have built into most pen refills. And these are just the generic ones that come with the kit. Still right, very nice though. So, lay out your kit. These are pretty simple. Press the nib in. I've done enough of these that I don't need. I've done enough of these, I don't need instructions. So we're gonna press the nib in. And this is just a bar clamp or a pipe clamp. I got the pipe, the clamp and the whole spiel. This is a Bessie at uh, either Lowe's or Home Depot. I don't remember which one. 
and there goes my air compressor. Now that pressed in real nice and easy. Now these have little threads on them. You can see that? Now you don't want to put, these are kind of delicate. So what I do is I keep handy a small quarter inch socket set. And I just go through and find the socket it just fits into. It just happens to be seven millimeter. Now I'll take this push it in a little bit take my socket and that this way we're just pushing evenly on that ridge this is why I like using the pipe clamp they're very quick to adjust and you have more control with a slow screw than you do those levers now that's put together I can never find the camera. You know what you do is you take your, this is the style, you put the refill in, you attach the mechanism or the transmission, screw that on, check that it functions. Now, for the cap. Sometimes with these nicer ones, my cushions are getting a little worn out. So what I'll do is take a little piece of blue shop towel or some of these have pieces of bubble wrap. You can wrap that around. And you give it a squeeze. Some of these you gotta watch, like this one. You gotta put over on the edge. And you squeeze that on there, and so you don't hit the the clip with your vise. I think that's why they tell you to do this the other way. And I squeeze on the fancy little diamonds or crystals. that together and there you go one finished princess pen that definitely sparkles this will be available on my Etsy shop in the next couple days go on there check it out join my Facebook group If you like what you see, leave me a comment, thumbs up, do all that stuff the YouTubers tell you to do. Thanks for watching.